Hello students. So here we are going to see in unsymmetrical bending topic properties of beam cross section. So here, uh, as I told you in last class, that we have we are going to consider uh, the moment of inertia. What is principal moment of inertia? And uh, we are going to see the how we are going to consider uh, the product of inertia in this topic. so we know uh, you know that product of inertia okay so product of inertia if you how we show it as integration of x y da okay so this is known as product of inertia and the pair of axes for which it is zero so they are known as principal axis of the cross section so the integral x y da is known as product of inertia so the moment of inertia of any area about its principal axis are known as principal moment of inertia so there is one more thing that principal moment of inertia principal moment of inertia so what it is that is it is the moment of inertia of an area about its principal axis and the bending moment about any other axis is known as unsymmetrical bending okay now coming to principal moment of inertia so the principal axis of any area are those axis about which the product of inertia i x x is zero the product of inertia i x y is equal to zero so the principal axis of any area are those axes about which the product of inertia is zero now axis of symmetry through centroid are automatically principal axis as the product moment of moment for opposite quadrants cancelling each other out so here let's see this diagram to understand it now here you can see there are there is the original axis x and y okay ox over these are the two perpendicular axes through centroid okay they are the two perpendicular axes through centroid and ou and ov ou and ov ou and ov here it is ov they are the principal axis at an angle theta okay they are at an angle theta with ox and oy and it is an anti clockwise direction okay so the condition for principal axis condition for principal axis in such case can be written as tan 2 theta equals to 2 of i x y 2 of i x y divided by i y y minus i x x okay so condition for principal axis will be this so you how to remember this now the principal moment of inertia about axis ou and ov so what is the principal moment of inertia about axis ou and ov so what is that so we we get it as i u u is equal to half of i x x plus i y y plus half of i x x minus i y y cos 2 theta minus i x y sin 2 theta so you have to remember this and on simplifying we get it as half of i x x plus i y y plus half of i x x minus i y y sec 2 theta so this is the value we get it uh, this is the principal moment of inertia about ou and ov so this is i u u value now let's see what is the i v v value so i v v is written as i v v is equal to half of i x x plus i y y minus half of i x x 
माइनस आई वाई वाई सेक थीटा सेक टू थीटा एंड वी ऑल्सो हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस दैट आई यू यू प्लस आई वी वी इज इक्वल टू आई एक्स एक्स प्लस आई वाई वाई ओके सो देर इज अ फाइनली बैलेंस ओवर देर ओके सो नाउ वेन द कॉर्डिनेट्स नाउ कमिंग टू दिस फिगर नाउ द वेन द कॉर्डिनेट्स यू एंड वी relative to ou and ob okay if the coordinates related to ou and ob so those coordinates are u and b so this is the u related to ou and for ob the coordinate is v okay so they are the coordinates and x and y they are related to ox and oy so x coordinate is related to x axis and y coordinate is related to oy so at any point p so at any point we are considering some point p so then if such a condition is there then we can write that u is equal to so we can write that u is equal to x cos theta plus y sin theta and v is equal to y cos theta minus x sin theta okay so this is the way u and v are written now if i x x and i y y are equal if i x x moment of inertia about x x and y uh, x and y axis if they are equal then 2 theta will be 90 degree so if the case that i x x is equal to i y y then 2 theta will be 90 degree and in that case cos theta will be 0 and sec theta will be 1 by cos theta that is it will become infinity so previous questions what we have see for i u u i v v and i x x i y y so in that uh, equation these terms are there okay so the equation previous equations what we have got they can be uh, they may not give the correct result so uh, the equation for the if the cross section is rectangle so a rectangle of width b and depth d if it is considered a rectangle with depth uh, d and width b so that sides of the rectangle are parallel to the sides of the rectangle are parallel to the principal axis so in this case the product of inertia i x y will be i x y is equal to integration of x y d a is equal to integration of x y dy dx is equal to x square by 2 so here this distance is k this is this height is h so integration about i the product of inertia we want to calculate what will be the product of inertia so that is integration of xy into da now what is x y into da what is da da is nothing but but again the area so it is dy into dx okay and then there is a double integration so when we do the double integration and when we know the values this distance is k and this distance is h so in that case the limits become k minus b by 2 So this is a k minus b by two. So this distance and k plus b by two, k plus b by two, k plus b by two. So from here to here, okay. So these are the limits into y square by two, h plus d by two, h minus d by two. So on solving this, we arrive at A into h into k. Okay, so here, hence the product of inertia of a rectangle whose sides, whose sides, these are the sides, are parallel to the axis, is equal to the area of rectangle into distance C G distance from one axis. Okay, C G distance from one axis into C G from the other axis. Okay, so this 
actually this is all formulation and theory so what you have to remember that the product of inertia of a rectangle whose this is the only in fact this is the thing you have to remember the the product of inertia of a rectangle whose sides are parallel to the axis is equal to the area of rectangle into cg distance from one axis and cg distance from other axis because these are the cg distance this is the cg distance from x axis and this is the cg distance from y axis so this is the product of inertia so student this was uh, this uh, was about the properties of beam cross section so we have seen the principal moment of inertia how we consider it so hope you understood this is a theory part again uh, next class we are going to it is going to be a theory it is about stress in unsymmetrical bending and after that we are going to solve the numerical so thanks for listening thank you